Mr. Chairman, Professor Oshiro, colleagues and friends, thank you very much for inviting nursing to participate in this esteemed group of laser historians. Many of you know me, but I'm not sure you know exactly what I represent or who I work with. Dr. Glantz said that ASLMS created an opportunity for nurses to meet together, but in fact, we went to that society and asked for a home. The very first international society meeting that we ever attended officially was in 1983 in Detroit, Michigan. Soon after, there were three of us at that particular meeting, and we decided that we needed a place for nurses to develop nursing practice in parallel with what was going on in the development of lasers and surgery. Our first official meeting was in 1984 at the American Society for Laser Medicine and Surgery meeting in Salt Lake City, Utah. We had 21 nurses at that first meeting, and there were six things on the agenda most of which had to do with how are we going to make sure that we had continuing education and training on all of this new technology that was proliferating around the world. Dr. Sue Huther was our first PhD nurse who was the founding mother of our organization, and Dr. John Dixon was the one who really enabled us to become a reality. Soon after that very first meeting, we began to liaise with international organizations around the world, the first one of which was the International Society for Laser Surgery and Medicine. We had poster sessions at every meeting, and we attempted to include nursing education along with all of the excellent medical education that was so much a part of every one of the conferences. We went to China in 1987 as a sponsored organization from the American Society for Laser Medicine and Surgery, and it was the first time that I personally met many of you. Dr. Cao, in 1989, was the very first one to invite us as a group of nurses to participate in an education program at an ISLSM meeting. That meeting in Taiwan was something we'll never forget because it really launched us as a group and as a profession. Shortly after that, there were many other opportunities for us to meet together, both with our nursing groups and with you, our medical colleagues. One of the most uh, successful of all of these meetings was in 1993, when Dr. Nimsakal had us come to Bangkok to do a very, very well-organized and well-attended nursing course. These are just a few of the things, and I don't have the time, nor I'm sure do you have the interest in looking at the whole list of all of the different places that we've done nursing courses. I just wanted you to be aware of the many, many opportunities that we have had. Well, one of the things that happened along this journey was that we found we couldn't become an individual uh, freestanding, if you will, international society because, quite honestly, there was no funding for nursing as far as developing an organization. The industry wasn't interested because we don't purchase lasers, so we got very little support from the industry. However, we did get support from a lot of the other medical organizations. In 1992, IORNA was formed. IORNA is the European Operating Room Nurses Association. It was founded in 1992, and at that time, 17 countries were represented. This was the first international gathering of individual countries operating theater nursing associations. This then became the foundation for what we have now, which is the International Federation of Perioperative Nurses. This organization was formed in the year 2000, and the original members were country organizations from EORNA, which was the 17 countries in the European Union, from ACORN, which is the Australian Confederation of Operating Room Nurses, the South Australian Theatre Sisters Organization, the United Kingdom Operating Theater Nurses Organization, the Perioperative Nurses of New Zealand, the American Association of Operating Room Nurses, the Operating Room Nurses of Canada, and the Operating Room Nurses of Korea. These were the founding members of IFPN. 
This organization now has many other members. We have a website. You're welcome to look at it to see what we do, who we are, and what our goals are. The vision as stated for the IFPN is to actively promote perioperative nursing globally, not just laser nursing, because laser nursing is only a small component of what we as perioperative nurses do with and for you, our surgical colleagues. Our mission is to support perioperative nurses internationally to improve patient care by promoting evidence-based best practice. Our goals were very clear. We wanted to participate actively and visibly in organizational activities so that we could continue to build and develop collaborative practice. Our main goal was to initiate and then continue both education and training in all aspects of laser technology, patient care, and safety. We, because we were the largest user group of international safety standards, wanted to, to participate in the development of international standards, which we have done. We are now members of the International Electrotechnical Commission. We sit on every major standards organization around the world. I currently hold the position of secretary of the American National Standards Institute document for laser safety and healthcare. Most of all, we needed to define what is laser nursing. We had a very interesting discussion at that first meeting way back in 1983, and we said, well, we're not laser nurses because we don't take care of lasers. We take care of patients having laser treatments. So patient safety and patient care has always been our major goal. And yet, somehow, we've never been able to come up with a better term than laser nursing. Anyone have any ideas? I'm glad to, to hear them. I don't have as many pictures or as many details of past meetings as many of you, my fellow historians, have had. But I did want to share with you, uh, these are pictures from Taiwan from the first laser nursing meeting that we had at ISLSM where we went into the operating theaters, we worked with our colleagues there. We had many conferences with the administrators of the hospitals and of the nursing directors. And then from that point on, we began to have more and more participation in some of the committees and activities of many of the organizations that we've heard about this morning. And I want to thank once again the support and continuing motivation, help, and recognition that we have received through many of you sitting here in the audience. So where are we now? Well, again, we are constantly striving for excellence in practice, for true advocacy for patients receiving laser care, for competency, both for ourselves and for the next generation, for professional development, and most of all, fulfilling the dreams that we've always had of being part of this whole wonderful world of laser technology. Ahead are many challenges. Nurses are involved in so many things now outside the operating theater, and we have to develop our professional practice guidelines so that we're prepared to do those types of things. We're involved in a lot of cosmetic and aesthetic practices as independent and private practitioners in many countries. We're becoming more and more involved in low-level laser therapy, both in patient education, application, and support systems. We work with mobile laser systems, taking lasers to patients that don't have access to them by coming into hospitals. We're very much concentrated on home health care, and this is a patient receiving lymphedema treatment in her home. And again, very much developing a lot of curriculum, core curriculum for education and training, certification process, and teaching. I'm very happy to hear a lot of the history this morning because I very much believe that you have to take your history with you. You don't know where you're going until you know where you've come from. And as we grow and develop nursing in the future, we want you to realize that we are not just the nurse. We're not the ones that just hand you the instrument, though we do that very well. We are the advocates for your patients. We're students learning all the time. We're educators. 
We are members of the surgical team in every respect, and we are professional practitioners. We hope that we will always be able to be involved in new technologies, in the new opportunities that those technologies present, and in the international initiative to promote that education and training. Very clearly, as Henry Ford said, coming together was a start. That was in 1983. Working together is progress. That's today. But staying together in the future is our challenge and the measure of our success. So we hope that from this day on, that we can continue to collaborate, to work together, and to make sure that the next generations of our laser family have equal opportunities to access technology and education and training. Thank you.